to be a DIY video on how to restore 12 volt lead acid car batteries. Alright, I got it to my car and I noticed the car wouldn't start and so I looked at the battery and the voltage was way low. Before I wanted to go buy a battery I wanted to see how much they cost and they were about 150 bucks at Advanced Auto and I said uh, no way so I looked at what the battery spec was, looks like it's right around 410 amps and now I'm going to see if I can try to recover the battery. Okay, here are the tools for the job. You'll need some type of power supply, preferably a battery charger that can do up to 200 amps. I used a power supply that was 34 amps. It did the job, but I could probably use something that's more powerful, like a battery charger. I'll leave all the links in the descriptions below. So a good set of jumper cables that can do at least 200 amps, or as much as your power supply puts out. And a generic cheapy voltmeter that can measure DC voltage. So again, I'll leave all the links in the description below. Okay, what you want to do to be successful for this kind of operation is I'd like to disconnect the battery cable from the, from the battery itself in case there's anything that happens that causes the voltage to go above the car's system voltage. It's probably better just to pull the battery out of the car altogether. So make sure just to be cautious, get some safety goggles and work with those on. Uh, there shouldn't be any major splashing, just some minor bubbling as you can see here in one of my other batteries that I've been doing. And there is a, re a release of a gas. So make sure that your area is ventilated. It's better to just to do this outside or if you have a garage, make sure the garage door is open. So this is my first cycle. Uh, you can see the battery is 11.92 volts. It will not turn the car on. There's not a lot of cranking amps since there's no alternator to uh, turn over. It's just a basic electric car to power the, the battery system in the car. So here's my uh, DCS3333. It's a basically a rack power supply. It puts out 34 amps and I've got it uh, kind of set to max out either voltage or current. So what this does is it pumps uh, a significant amount of current into the battery, heating the battery up and causing uh, the sulfation to kind of fall off the plates and for lack of better terms you're, you're kind of cooking the battery. So as you start off you'll start seeing a little bit amount of bubbles here. My, my light isn't working but uh, I'll kind of show you later on that this seriously starts bubbling and that's, that's the reaction occurring and um, is bringing the battery uh, back to life, so to speak. So, if you do this three or four times, uh, maybe five times, I only have uh, this power supply on hand, so I'm using this, but you want to use something that's got some significant current to it. So the more current you can kind of pump in the battery, the, the better it is usually to uh, reduce uh, the sulfation on the cells themselves. So towards the end of my first cycle, uh, my sulfation voltage is 17.93, and as you keep doing this, uh, if, if it's successful, you'll see that voltage at the battery actually go down. And so that's telling you that the internal resistance is going down as well. I'll kind of spare the uh, electrical details of how that works. But basically knowing that as your terminal voltage on the battery goes down to somewhere between 13 and 14, that means that the internal resistance is going down on the battery and the sulfation is being removed from the plates. So again, you know, as you start doing these cycles, you'll see that, that voltage terminal uh, drop a little bit, and that's always a, a good sign. Okay, a little bit later in that same first cycle, uh, you can see the sulfation voltage has uh, dropped some more. So now it's 17.88. I try to measure it at the end of the cycle. So I turn off the power supply, and you can immediately see the, the voltage starts falling down, which is normal. And as you, again, increase the amount of cycles uh, that falling voltage will uh, be higher and higher and higher and ideally you'd, you'd like it to be somewhere in the uh, upper 12s to 13 volts but in this case you know I'm, I'm working that process and you'll see as the cycles kind of go on that the uh, voltage will begin to recover. So at the end of my first cycle I let it sit for 24 hours and then I measured the uh, open circuit voltage of the battery and this is cycle 2 and I'm have, I have 12.4 volts at the battery and so now I'll fire it up and do the process again. Again it takes about 4 or 5 times for the battery to, to start recovering so in this case you'll start seeing the, the, the battery voltage will start charging up again and just like you see in cycle 1 the same results will be exhibited but in this case when you're, when you're done with cycle 2 the, the end resting voltage of the battery should be higher than in cycle one, and so you'll see that in the subse subsequent trials or cycles of the battery. Okay, this is after 24 hours of rest. It's now at 12.61, uh, so it's jumped up from 12.44 to 12.61, and 
And so I just want to make sure every time I'm running these tests the battery is not too hot. Okay, for my previous cycle I started off at 12.61 at the resting voltage, well, which, which will be the resting voltage uh, for the start of cycle 3. And we'll kind of run this through cycle 3 and kind of show you what the sulfation voltage is for the lowest sulfation voltage. And as you, like I said before, you can see as the, the sulfation pro or the desulfation process occurs as the, the cycles increase that terminal voltage on the battery uh, should be going down. So here it's uh, 17.8 and at the end of the, the cycle it was 17.14 so the sulfation voltage I call it on the battery is starting to go down. So this is the fourth and final cycle of the battery as you can see here the uh, sulfation voltage or the, the voltage at the, the battery terminal is now 16.7 where it started off at roughly 17.88 uh, so I've got a significant voltage drop and that's exactly what I want to see. I want to see that that internal resistance is starting to go down. And as you can see it's kind of fluctuating between 16.7 and 16.69 and, and the plates here are really starting to boil. Again this is normal this release of I think believe it's hydrogen gas uh, so at the end of the, the fourth cycle I was at 12.78 volts and I started at 11.92 so I've seen a significant increase in voltage. Again I could probably boost this higher if I had more current out of the power supply but again I don't draw a lot of uh, amperage off the battery so it, it's working great for my needs and again I could probably do more current and I get better results but for me th this, this is fine. I always like to go in and clean my battery out, make sure uh, there's there's no debris around the cell hole so nothing falls into the cell holes and contaminates the uh, internals of the battery so I go ahead and clean that off and I also like to clean off my posts, I just like to keep a clean battery so it uh, lives longer and, and gives you better performance so my light turned off on my camera but basically I clean everything up and uh, get it ready to use. Alright so 24 hours, it's about uh, 32 degrees outside it's uh, resting at 12.31 volts, so it's uh, doing fairly well. I'm going to adjust the, the connection here. It looks like I can get a little bit better connection. So I got 12.34 volts. So after 24 hours, I get 12.34 volts on the car. Now a week later, it's at 12.47. So as I'm driving the car, it's also probably helping with the, the desulfation process. And so the internal re resistance of the uh, battery is starting to decrease as it recovers. So that's always a good sign. Uh, the car has been sitting for probably about three days and it's at 12.47. So now I'm going to do a load test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to short circuit the battery through this shunt and see how much current the battery can put out. So this shunt is rated at 100 amps and for every 100 amps it will spit off 50 millivolts across the terminal and I'm going to use a, a digital voltmeter to grab that voltage and basically do a proportion to figure out based on how much uh, millivolts I have what the actual current is of the battery. So I've got it basically connected to this voltmeter. It's set for AC. Um, it won't have any different results for DC. It's basically capturing a, a peak uh, change in voltage here. So that's what I'm after. DC again will work just as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a short circuit across the battery and then capture the current like I, like I said before and that will determine what my short circuit current is. Now it, it's not a definitive perfect scientific test it just shows that I can get uh, a significant amount of current out of the battery so here I registered 164 millivolts if I do the math then I should get roughly uh, 300 ish uh, amps out of that battery and so I got a little voltmeter now connected to the terminal of the battery and I'll run this test again and see what my uh, terminal voltage goes down to again you want to use some good thick beefy jumper cables to do this don't use anything cheap and only leave it on there for a second or two you'll see some sparks that's kind of normal and you can see here uh, when I do it again the, the battery voltage will start to drop to roughly 9 volts that isn't the best but again the battery is fine for what I need it okay these are my final results here so let's look at the table as I go through cycles 1, 2, 3, and 4 I'll let it go I'll cook for uh, I don't know, roughly 15 minutes or so and then I'll shut it off and the next day I'll try another cycle and another cycle and another cycle. So this is over the span of about four to five days. As you can see after each cycle the end voltage is higher than the start voltage so that means the battery is being recovered. The other thing to notice is 
if you look at the sulfation column, that voltage is actually decreasing. So again, when that voltage goes down, that means that the internal resistance of the battery is starting to decrease. There becomes a, a point where that won't go down anymore and that's probably the best that the, uh, the battery will see. So in my case, I started at 17.88 and that voltage went down to 16.69 and the final one week resting voltage was 12.47. So looking at the resting voltage versus state of charge, I'm at 12.47, so that's between 75 and 100% of the state of charge resting voltage. So I'm probably between, I don't know, 80 and 85% of the charge that's been restored on that battery, which for my use is perfectly fine. So the last thing I tried to attempt was the cold cranking amps. It, it's not an exact scientific uh, recreation. I don't have a perfect uh, load discharger. I just use kind of a short circuit analysis and I came up with 334 amps versus the 410 which is 80 percent roughly of the uh, capacity rating of the battery so the, the battery has definitely been uh, recovered. So there you have it a battery restoration process please help the channel out by liking and subscribing and leave any questions in the comments below.